Hello students, today we will learn about Michael Porter's 5 forces model. This session presents Michael Porter's 5 forces model which is based on the insight that a corporate strategy should meet the opportunities and threats in the organization's external environment. Especially competitive strategy should be based on an understanding of industry structures and the way they change. Driving forces analysis when done properly pushes company managers to think about what's around the corner and what the company needs to be doing to get ready for it. Through this session, students will be able to understand that the five forces model is to help companies assess the nature of an industry's competitiveness and develop corporate strategies accordingly. Students will get ideas about the framework which allows a business to identify and analyze the important forces that determine the profitability of an industry. The concept of driving forces. Howard Business School professor Michael E. Porter developed the five forces model in 1979. It was his first article for the Howard Business Review titled How Competitive Forces Shape Strategy. It was later detailed in his book on competitive strategy. This model aim to provide a new way to use effective strategy to identify, analyze and manage external factors in an organization's environment. First, although it is important to judge what growth stage an industry is in. There is more analytical value in identifying the specific factors causing fundamental industry and competitive adjustments. Second, industry and competitive conditions change because certain forces are enticing or pressuring industry participants to alter their actions. Third, driving forces are those that have the biggest influence on what kinds of changes will take place in the industry structure and competitive environment. Fourth, driving forces analysis has three steps. A. Identifying what the driving forces are. B. Assessing the impact they will have on the industry. C. Determining what strategy changes are needed to prepare for the impacts of the driving forces. The five forces identified by Porter are divided into first horizontal forces, threat of substitutes, threat of new entrants, competitive rivalry. Second vertical forces, bargaining power of buyers, and bargaining power of customers. Now, introduction of five forces model. Through his model, Porter classifies five main competitive forces that affect any market and all industries. It is these forces that determine how much competition will exit in a market and consequently the profitability and attractiveness of this market for a company. Through sound corporate strategies, a company will aim to shape these forces to its advantage to strengthen the company's position in the industry. For the purpose of this model, industry attractiveness is the overall profitability potential of the industry. An attractive industry will be one where the combined power of the competitive forces will increase profitability potential. These forces termed as the micro environment by Porter influence how a company serves its target market and whether it is able to turn a profit. Any change in one of the forces might mean that a company has to re-evaluate its environment and rely its business practices and strategies. An attractive marketplace 
does not mean that all companies will enjoy similar success levels. Rather, the unique selling propositions, strategies and processes will give edge to one company over the other. Now students, we discuss competitive rivalry. Competitive pressures associated with the jockeying among rival sellers. First, the strongest of the five competitive forces is nearly always the rivalry among competing sellers, the marketing, maneuvering and jockeying for buyer patronage that continually go on. Second, in effect, a market is a competitive battlefield where it is customary and expected that rival sellers will employ whatever resources and weapons they have in their business arsenal to improve their market position and performance. Third, a brief discussion of some of the factors that influence. The tempo of rivalry among industry competitors is in order. A. Rivalry intensifies when competing sellers are active in launching fresh actions to boost their market standing and business performance. B. Large number of firms. If there are more firms within an industry, there is an increased competition for the same customers and product resources. That is even greater competition if industry players are equal in size and power as rivals compete for market dominance. C. Rivalry among industry players can affect industry profits through downward pressure on prices, increased innovation, increased advertising, increased service product improvements among others. Fourth, other indicators of the intensity of rivalry among industry members include a. Whether industry members are racing to offer better performance features or higher quality or improved customer service or a wider product selection. b. How frequently rivals resort to such marketing tactics as special sales promotions, heavy advertising or rebates or low interest rate financing to drum up additional sales. c. How actively industry members are pursuing efforts to build stronger dealer networks or establish positions in foreign markets or otherwise expand their distribution capabilities and market presence. D. How hard companies are striving to gain a market age over rivals by developing valuable expertise and capabilities. Fifth, normally industry members are proactive in drawing upon their competitive arsenal of weapons and deploying their organizational resources in a manner calculated to strengthen their market position and performance. Sixth, additional factors that influence the tempo of rivalry among industry competitors include a. Rivalry intensifies as the number of competitors increases and as competitors become more equal in size and capability. B. Rivalry is usually stronger in slow growing markets and weaker in fast growing markets. C. Rivalry is usually weaker in industries comprised of so many rivals that the impact of any one company's actions is spread thinly across all industry members. Likewise, it is often weak when there are fewer than five competitors. D. Rivalry increases when buyer demand falls off and sellers find themselves with excess capability and or inventory. E. Rivalry increases as it becomes less costly for buyers to switch brands. F. Rivalry increases 
as the products of rival sellers become more standardized g rivalry is more intense when industry conditions tempt competitors to use price cuts or other competitive weapons to boost unit volumes h rivalry increases in proportion to the size of the payoff from a successful strategic move i rivalry becomes more volatile and unpredictable as the diversity of competitors increases in terms of visions strategic intents objectives strategies resources and countries of origin j rivalry increases when strong companies outside acquire weak firms in the industry and launch aggressive well funded moves to transform their newly acquired competitors into major market contenders k a powerful successful competitive strategy employed by one company greatly intensifies the competitive pressures on its rivals to develop effective strategic responses or be relegated to also ran status now our second point is threat of new entrants the competitive threat to a company's business may not only be from existing players in the market but also from potential new entrants into the marketplace if an industry is profitable or attractive in a long term strategic manner then it will be attractive to new companies unless there are barriers to entry in place new firms may easily enter the market and change the dynamics of the industry the particular dynamics of an industry that restrict entry into it are called barriers to entry the most attractive scenario for a new company is when a potential market has low barriers to exit but high barriers to entry the economics of any industry will determine the level of difficulty faced when trying to enter this market now competitive pressures associated with the threat of new entrants first several factors affect the strength of the competitive threats of potential entry in a particular industry second one factor relates to the size of the pool of likely entry candidates and the resources at their command as a rule competitive pressures intensify as the pool of entry candidates increases in a size third frequently the strongest competitive pressures associated with potential entry come not from outsiders but from current industry participants looking for growth opportunities fourth existing industry members are often strong candidates to enter market segments or geographic areas where they currently do not have a market presence fifth a second factor concerns whether the likely entry candidates face high or low entry barriers the most widely encountered barriers that entry candidates must hurdle include a the presence of sizable economies of scale in production or other areas of operation when incumbent companies enjoy cost advantages associated with a large scale operation outsiders must either enter on a large scale or accept a cost disadvantage and consequently lower profitability b cost and resource disadvantages not related to size existing firms may have low unit cost as a result of experience or learning curve effects key patents and partnerships with the best and cheapest suppliers of raw materials and components proprietary technology know how not readily available to newcomers favorable locations and low fixed costs c brand preferences 
and customer loyalty in some industries, buyers are strongly attached to established brands. The high capital requirements, the larger the total dollar investment needed to enter the market successfully, the more limited the pool of potential entrants. E. The difficulties of building a network of distributors or retailers and securing adequate space on retailers' shelves. F. Restrictive regulatory policies, government agencies can limit or even bar entry by requiring licenses and patents. G. Tariffs and international trade restrictions, national governments commonly use tariffs and trade restrictions to raise entry barriers for foreign firms and protect domestic producers from outside competition. H. The ability and willingness of industry incumbents to launch vigorous initiative to block a newcomer's successful entry. Sixth, whether an industry's entry barriers ought to be considered high or low and how hard it is for a new entrants to compete on a level playing field depend on the resources and competencies possessed by the pool of potential entrants. Seventh, in evaluating the potential threat of entry, company managers must look at a how formidable the entry barriers are for each type of potential entrant, b how attractive the growth and profit prospects are for new entrants, 8. The best test of whether potential entry is a strong or weak competitive force in the marketplace is to ask if the industry's growth and profit prospects are strongly attractive to potential entry candidates. 9. The stronger the threat of entry, the more that incumbent firms are driven to seek ways to fortify their positions against newcomers pursuing strategic moves to not only protect the market shares but also make entry more costly or difficult. Tenth, the threat of entry changes as the industry's prospects grow brighter or dimmer and as entry barriers rise or fall. Now, we discuss third point, threat of substitutes. Within the framework defined by Porter, substitute products are those that exit in another industry but may be used to fulfill the same need. The more substitutes that exit for a product, the larger the company's competitive environment and the lower the potential for a profit. An example of these is that for a boxed juice producer, fresh juice, water and soft drinks are all substitutes though they exit in separate categories. A high threat of substitutes will impact a company's ability to set prices that it wants. If a substitute is priced lower or fulfills a need better than it may end up attracting consumers towards it and reduce sales for existing companies. Now, students, we discuss competitive pressures from the seller of substitute products. First, companies in one industry come under competitive pressure from the actions of a companies in a closely adjoining industry whenever buyers view the products of the two industries as good substitutes. Second, just how strong the competitive pressures are from sellers of substitute products depends on three factors. A. Whether substitutes are readily available and attractively priced. B. Whether buyers view the substitutes as being comparable or better in terms of quality, performance and other relevant attributes. C. How much it cost and users to switch to substitutes. As a rule, 
the lower the price of substitutes the higher their quality and performance and the lower the users switching cost the more intense the competitive pressures posed by substitute products the threat of substitutes is affected by factors such as brand loyalty switching cost relative prices as well as trends and fads now our fourth point is bargaining power of buyers how buyer bargaining power can create competitive pressures when buyers have the power to affect the prices in an industry it becomes an important factor to consider for a company the leverage that certain types of buyers have in negotiating favorable terms can range from weak to strong now we discuss competitive pressures stemming from buyer bargaining power and seller buyer collaboration first whether seller buyer relationships represent a weak or strong competitive force depends on a whether some or many of the buyers have sufficient bargaining leverage to obtain price concessions and other favorable terms and conditions of sale b the extent and competitive importance of seller buyer strategic partnerships in the industry even if buyers do not purchase in the large quantities or offer a seller important market exposure or prestige they gain a degree of bargaining leverage in the following circumstances a if buyers cost of switching to competing brands or substitutes are relatively low buyers who can readily switch brands or source from several sellers have more negotiating leverage than buyers who have high switching cost b if the number of buyers is small or if customer is particularly important to a seller the smaller the number of buyers the less easy it is for sellers to find alternative buyers when a customer is lost to a competitor c if buyer demand is weak and sellers are scrambling to secure additional sales of their products weak or declining demand creates a buyers market and shifts bargaining power to buyers d if buyers are well informed about sellers products prices and cost the more information buyers have the better bargaining position they are in e if buyers pose a credible threat of integrating backward into the business of sellers companies like anuser bush coors and hans have integrated backward into metal can manufacturing to gain bargaining power in obtaining the balance of their can requirements from otherwise powerful metal can manufacturers f if buyers have discretion in whether and when they purchase the product if consumers are unhappy with the present deals offered on major appliances home entertainment centers or other goods for which time is not a critical purchase factor they may be in a position to delay purchase until prices and financing terms improve not all buyers of an industry's product have equal degrees of bargaining power with sellers and some may be less sensitive than others to price quality or service differences now how seller buyer partnerships can create competitive pressures partnerships between sellers and buyers are an increasingly important element of the competitive picture in business to business relationships as opposed to business to consumer relationships now students our fifth point is bargaining power of suppliers competitive pressures stemming from supplier bargaining power 
and supplier seller collaboration first whether supplier seller relationships represent a weak or strong competitive force depends on a whether the major suppliers can exercise sufficient bargaining power to influence the terms and conditions of supply in their favor b the nature and extent of supplier seller collaboration now how supplier bargaining power can create competitive pressures when the major suppliers to an industry have considerable leverage in determining the terms and conditions of the item they are supplying they are in position to exert competitive pressures on one or more rival sellers the factors that determine whether any of the suppliers to an industry are in a position to exert substantial bargaining power or leverage are fairly clear cut a whether the item being supplied is commodity that is readily available from many suppliers at the going market price b whether a few large suppliers are the primary sources of a particular item c whether it is difficult or costly for industry members to switch their purchases from one supplier to another or to switch to attractive substitute inputs d whether certain suppliers provide a differentiated input that enhances the performance or quality of the industry's product e whether certain suppliers provide equipment or services that deliver valuable cost saving efficiencies to industry members in operating their production processes f whether suppliers provide an item that accounts for a sizable fraction of the costs of the industry's product h whether industry members are major customers of suppliers i whether it makes good economic sense for industry members to integrate backward and self manufacture items they have been buying from suppliers now how seller supplier partnerships can create competitive pressures in more and more industries sellers are forging strategic partnerships with select suppliers in efforts to reduce inventory and logistics cost speed the availability of next generation components enhance the quality of the parts and components being supplied and reduce defect rates and squeeze out important cost savings for both themselves and their suppliers the many benefits of effective seller supplier collaboration can translate into competitive advantage for industry members who do the best job of managing supply chain relationship the more opportunities that exist for win win efforts between a company and its suppliers the less the relationship is characterized by who has the upper hand in bargaining with the other now effects of five forces model on industry interpreting industry analysis unattractive industry low entry barriers suppliers and buyers have strong positions strong threats from sub substitute products intense rivalry among competitors attractive industry high entry barriers suppliers and buyers have weak positions few threats from substitute products moderate rivalry among competitors now student we discuss how to use the model the porter's five force model is often used as starting point to evaluate a company's position in its industry and to access its level of competitiveness though this framework is generic and applicable to any industry it is only effective if it is used in a specific context that applies directly to the company undertaking the evaluation porter also emphasized the importance of using these model at more basic industry level if an organization operates in different industries 
then it must develop a separate five forces model for each of its industries. Now steps to follow when performing analysis. A company may follow three basic steps when performing an industry analysis. First, gather information on each force. During the first step, the company should gather information about that industry using the five forces as guide for classifying these information. Second, analyze results and display in a diagram. After substantial information has been gathered, a team may sit down and analyze how each of the identified factors affect the industry. Every industry will have different factors affecting it differently. This makes it vital to not compare across industries or use another industry's data. Third, formulate strategy based on conclusions. The analysis of factors affecting the industry can now be translated into specific strategies to further the interest of the company. Now navigating the model development before, during and after. It is beneficial for company working on Porter's 5 forces analysis to maintain an analytical frame of mind before the process begins. During the process and after everything has been completed, some aspects to keep in mind are now, before. Understand the goals of the analysis and expectations from it. Understand the scope of the analysis and who are the potential beneficiaries. Allow open and honest brainstorming session regarding these questions. Now during. Keep a focus on the future. Do not focus on what could have been done better in the past, but focus on future improvements. Analyze positive and negatives. Be open to new ideas and possibilities. Now after. Identify lessons learned and how they can be used in the future. Document positives and negatives. Identify best practices. Understand whether the analysis had the required impact. Follow up on implementation plans. Record information from the analysis to be used in future decisions. Now students, our next point is do's and don'ts of 5 forces model. As with any framework, there are specific ways to use this one successfully. In order to gain any benefits from a Porter's 5 forces analysis, it should not be used on an individual company, but rather in the entire industry. These findings can then be used to devise strategies for the company itself. Be used when there are at least three or more competing firms in the market. Consider the impact of the government on the industry. Consider which stage in the life cycle the industry is. Consider the changing nature of industries and markets. Now students, we summarize the session. Industry conditions change because important forces are driving industry participants, competitors, customers or suppliers to alter their actions. The driving forces in an industry are the major underlying causes of changing industry and competitive conditions. They have the biggest influence on how the industry landscape will be altered. Some driving forces originate in the macro environment and some originate from the inner ring. Students by now should have understood that the stronger the forces of competition, the harder it becomes for industry members to earn attractive profits. Porter's five competitive forces are threat of entrance, bargaining power of buyers, bargaining power of suppliers, threat of substitutions and rivalry among existing competitors determine the long-run profitability of the industry. 
each of these forces can differently affect the profitability in different industries. This model helps marketers and business managers to look at the balance of power in a market between different types of organizations and to analyze the attractiveness and potential profitability of an industry sector. I hope students understood the session. Thank you.